It's December. The days are short, so it's the perfect time to lean back and dream. To stay at home, lighten up some candles, get a good cup of a spicy chai tea and to dream about love and bliss. Now shall we do that together? Are you in the mood to relax and listen to my thoughts about Christmas, about giving, about people with a fixed gaze transformed to robots with just one goal, creating the best Christmas ever, and about why I will be dancing naked around the fire beneath the northern lights on the 21st of December. But let's start a bit more contemplative and reflective. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anna Jelen, the Time Expert. Someone who surely celebrates Christmas different than anyone else. Or let's say, I don't celebrate Christmas just once. I try to celebrate a kind of a Christmas philosophy all around the year. But for this, we need to understand what Christmas actually is all about. This episode today is a bit different from others. No tools, just a few words on Christmas and how we could look at it. Enjoy. You have to know that the circumstances in my family are very different at Christmas. It is the busiest time of the year for my parents. Because I was born in a little tourist village in the Swiss mountains. Normally there live 2,000 inhabitants. But over Christmas and New Year, we have around 20,000 or even more people in the village. So full throttle for everyone who works there or has a boutique like my parents do. So I have never spent the classic holidays as you might know it. But anyway, what is Christmas? And what is Christmas all about? I'm sure there are plenty of different beliefs about Christmas. But now let's say you have never heard of Christmas. You have no clue what it is. And now you have to find out what Christmas is about. What would you do to find out? You would do research. And the first step could be just to observe the people in the month of December and make a conclusion about what you see. So what do you see? Maybe people going crazy in shopping malls? You would see them buying tons of stuff, but all wrapped in in paper. So yes, you see tons of gifts. So it's about giving? All right, so that is the first conclusion. Christmas is about giving. And then you hear all those songs. They are different than in the rest of the year. Yes, we, we call them Christmas songs. Now listen carefully to them and you will find out that Christmas is also about spending time with your loved ones and about being thankful for the life you have. So we got one conclusion. Christmas is about giving, about spending time with the loved ones and to be thankful about life. I think that is a very nice definition of Christmas, don't you? The only thing which bewilders me is this. Why just once a year? I mean, of course, better than nothing. But if it is about giving, about spending time with loved ones, about being thankful, well, then maybe once a year isn't enough. Let's start with the giving. Giving what, actually? Giving gifts? Yeah. That's nice. But let's go a bit further. What about giving something else? What about giving love? And what about giving moments? For me, this is the biggest gift you can give. The biggest gift you can receive. I mean, can't you feel how warm your heart gets when you give love? Isn't it the best feeling? Remember the podcast about being an optimist? Remember that I'm taking the example of Masaru Emoto. I repeat what I said. 
We know today that our words or thoughts have a huge impact. Let's take the experiment that Masaru Emoto did. He exposed music, spoken words, pictures and videos to water. After that, he crystallized the water. The result was that he always observed beautiful crystals after giving good words, like thank you, happiness, love, gratitude and so on. On the other hand, he observed disfigured crystals in the opposite situation, with the bad words. He believes that everything is a combination of energetic vibration. And now imagine that our body is filled with 60% of water. Our optimistic thoughts have for sure a positive influence and an impact on our body and health. Now I believe that it is something very similar with giving and feeling love. And love has many faces. It's about understanding, empathy, about taking care of others and oneself. And you might ask, but what do I have to do to give love? For me, there are different kinds of possibilities. Saying a real thank you giving a true and honest compliment, listening, sharing. Yes, sharing is so full with love. I mean, when you see your daughter or your boy sharing the food they have with someone else, it's just warming your heart, isn't it? Because that is love. Okay, so giving love could be one thing. But what about giving moments? For me, the best gift ever. But how can a moment be wrapped up in paper? Here are just two examples I have received. Once, I got a ticket for a concert. I was there with one of my best friends, the one who gifted me the ticket, and I will never forget this night. Because first, the band was awesome, but afterwards, we had one hell of a night out, and it was in the middle of the week, and boy, did I suffer the day after. But bloody hell, was that fun. A moment I will always remember. The second example of a gift of a moment was a voucher. A voucher to experience a surprise picnic in the woods. And here as well. I will never forget this afternoon in the woods. Now that's the thing. You can't put them on a shelf. But those gifts... They rest in your memory and in your heart. So for me, I hope that Christmas isn't just about consumption and an overload of material stuff. I hope the value of giving moments to others will be as high as the desire to give love. Now, can I ask you to think about this Christmas philosophy and how you could include this in your everyday life? In the beginning I said that I will be dancing around a big fire, naked, beneath the northern lights on the 21st of December, because that is the day of winter solstice. It's the shortest day of the year, at least for us in the northern hemisphere. And this, for me, shortest day, you know, me, time expert, this is worth celebrating. Let me explain. December contains the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere, the day with the fewest daylight hours, and this will be next week on the 21st of December. It occurs when one of the Earth's poles has its maximum tilt away from the sun. And don't you think that this is special? Well, I think yes. Now, as you are listening to this podcast, we might already be in Swedish Lapland, in another little house, lost in the woods, surrounded by snow, ice and trees. And it feels like being in nowhere. And up there, we will be for one month. We will be working, we will be working on new podcasts, videos and on my new workshop. But beside this, (laughs) we will... On the 21st of December, celebrate the shortest day of the year. 
Now, my dear listener out there, I have no idea how and if you celebrate Christmas at all. So in any case, I have a wish for you. I'm wishing you time to create unforgettable moments for yourself and for others. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. One of the next episodes will be about New Year's resolutions. And believe me, I have a wonderful alternative for this. One which works for me and many other people. So maybe also for you. Now take care and bye. By the way, if you want to see more about our life in Lapland, you can find me on many social media channels.